Welcome everyone to Activity Embedding, large screens layout for multi-activity apps. My name is Juan, and I'm an engineer on the Android Developer Relations team working on large screens and foldables. I'm John. I'm a technical writer in Android Developer Relations. I write documentation for large screens, tablets, foldables, Chrome OS devices. I wrote the Activity Embedding Developer Guide. Activity Embedding enables you to optimize activity-based apps for large screens quickly, easily, with no code refactoring. And it's being used today by top apps like Timu, WhatsApp, and eBay. Ran and I are going to show you how you too can take advantage of this powerful technology. Ran will get us started with some insights into the inner workings of activity embedding. Activity embedding allows you to display two activities side by side, which is great if your app is based on multiple activities and you want to implement a canonical list detail layout without going through massive code refactoring. Activity embedding will automatically choose the right presentation based on the available screen space and the settings that you provide. This means that you don't need to branch your code to handle small and large screens. Here is a sample app available on GitHub that shows you a list of fruits. When you click on a fruit, it launches a new activity showing the lorem ipsum details of that fruit. This is how it looks on a Pixel 7. Now, if I launch it on my Pixel tablet or Pixel Fold, those two activities that were stacked will now be displayed side by side. The library also handles screen and window size change at runtime. So if a user folds or unfolds their foldable device, they will get the right layout automatically. Activity embedding doesn't change the fundamental way activity ordering on Android works. It creates two containers or activity stacks, primary and secondary. The secondary is always considered at the top, above the primary one. If the screen is small, the secondary one will be displayed. But if there is enough space, these two stacks can be shown side by side. Let's take a look. When there is enough space to display both activities, a list activity is displayed on the left and a detail activity on the right. When the user clicks on a button in the detail activity, it launches a sub-detail activity that will be displayed on top of it. As you can see, activities are stacked in the secondary container as they are launched and the secondary container itself is stacked on top of the primary container. So activity stacking and back navigations are consistent with the ordering of the activities that you already have in your app, and whether your app is running on phone, tablet, or foldable device. I think it's time to see what it would take to add activity embedding to your existing app. So I'm going to hand it over to John, who will go into some details of the implementation. Thanks, Ran. While I was working on the activity embedding documentation, I thought, this sounds really easy. So I decided to try it myself to see. And you know what? It is. I was able to upgrade a basic app to a list detail layout in a couple of hours using just the documentation and a sample app as references. Here's how I did it and how you can too. But first, I'm going to show you a lot of code snippets. Don't worry about getting every detail. We've created a code lab and learning pathway that contain the same information. So you can refer to those. Links are in the presentation description. Also, I'll be showing Kotlin examples, but the code lab is in Kotlin and Java. You can implement activity embedding in either of two ways with an XML configuration file, or using the Jetpack Window Manager APIs. Today, we're going to look at the XML-based approach. To learn how to use the Window Manager APIs, check out the code lab. It goes into all the details, and you'll get to work hands-on with a sample app. You begin by adding the Window Manager library dependency to your app. Window Manager provides all the components that enable activity embedding. You also have to inform the system that your app has implemented 
activity embedding. You do that by adding the activity embedding splits enabled property to the application element in the app manifest. If you're used to XML resource files, creating an XML configuration file will be easy. The configuration file defines all the rules that control which of your app's activities are combined in task window splits and how they're presented. To define a basic split, you use the split pair rule element. The rule specifies two activities that display on screen at the same time. The split pair filter sub element identifies the activities. The rule also sets properties for the split, such as the split ratio, which specifies how much of the task window the primary activity occupies relative to the secondary. You can also set the minimum display width required for a split and whether the activities in the two containers should finish together. Another important rule is defined by the split placeholder rule element. Placeholders are activities that occupy the secondary container of a split when no other content is available. For example, a placeholder activity could occupy the secondary container of a list detail split until an item from the list is selected. When an item is selected, an activity containing the item detail replaces the placeholder. You do have to create a new placeholder activity class, but it's typically simple because it just fills the space so users know something goes there. Kind of like this page intentionally left blank. A split placeholder rule includes an activity filter sub-element, which specifies the activity the placeholder shares a split with. The rule also specifies the placeholder activity. You can set properties for the placeholder, including whether the activities in the primary container finish when the placeholder finishes. But what about activities you don't want to include in splits, like modal dialogues? For those, you use the activity rule element. You specify an activity name in an activity filter sub-element and set the always expand attribute to true. Now, whenever the activity launches, it occupies the entire task window. Okay, once you've created all your rules, you need to make them available to the window manager rule controller component. Rule controller parses the XML configuration file and makes the rules available to the system. The easiest way to add rules to rule controller is to use the rule controller API. First, you get a singleton instance of rule controller. Then you add the rules from the XML configuration file to rule controller with the set rules method. The parse rules method parses the XML file. You make the call in the onCreate method of the primary activity, or even better, the onCreate method of the application. That's to ensure your split rules are in effect when any activities launch. And you're done. You created a couple of files. You modified the app manifest and build.gradle files, but you didn't touch any of the app's existing Kotlin or Java code. And you didn't change the app experience on phones or other small screen devices. If you prefer to work entirely in code rather than XML, check out the Activity Embedding Code Lab for how to use the Window Manager APIs. Now, Ren will tell us how you can do even more with Activity Embedding. Thank you, John. Canonical list detail layout improves user experience on large screens. Here, we can see how eBay allows the user to see details of a specific item and browse through similar items without going back and forth. But that's not all. Let's take a closer look at how activities are being launched and displayed. Let's say we have activity A on the left and activity B on the right, each with its own container. Now let's say we want to launch activity C. We saw that activity C will be launched on top of B using the same container. However, you can customize that behavior. We can launch activity C to the side of activity B 
meaning that we keep activity B visible. This is what we call nested splits, and it is great for hierarchical navigation. Please note that the Z ordering places activity C above activity B, which means that the navigation order is kept when our app runs on phones and even during configuration changes, like when a user folds or unfolds their pixel fold. Activity embedding also supports horizontal splits, which allows you to place one activity at the top of the screen and another one at the bottom. Horizontal splits can be super useful when you want to provide a special, delightful experience for foldable devices in tabletop mode. We can take a look at Google Meet. When I'm unfolding my Pixel Fold, Meet is using the entire screen to display this nice big video interface. However, holding my phone for the entire meeting can be inconvenient. So I would like to place it on a table and in what we call tabletop mode. Meet adapts the UI to the new posture. So the video is displayed at the top of the screen and controls at the bottom. This lets me relax and lean back while running through the meeting without my hands hurting. To achieve this behavior, Meet uses the Window Manager API to dynamically add split rule when it detects tabletop posture. Let's take a quick look at the code. First, we need to detect that the device is in tabletop posture. The easiest way to do so is to query Window Manager and look for folding feature in the Window Layout Info object as I do here. We can detect if the device is in tabletop mode by looking at the hinge orientation, horizontal, and the hinge state, half open. It's important to check the hinge orientation as this value defines half of the posture itself. If it's horizontal, we are in tabletop. If it's vertical, we are instead in book mode. Once we know that the device is in tabletop mode, we need to programmatically create and register a filter rule. We start by defining a filter encapsulating both activities that we want to display. Next, we define the split attributes, specifying that we want the separation to happen by the hinge and we want this split to be horizontal. Then we can build our split rule combining the filter and the split attributes and register it with the rule controller. Once we have that, we simply launch the controls activity that we want to be placed at the bottom. And that's it. Users can now enjoy a lean back, delightful experience. Embedding activities from your own app is great and super helpful when you design and build for large screen devices. But you can do more. Starting with Android 13, you can embed activities from other apps as well. Cross-application activity embedding allows a tight visual integration between activities that belong to different apps. This enables the host app to provide a more immersive experience and control the flow instead of pushing users to completely different app. For example, let's take a look at the wallpaper selector that shows up in the settings app of Pixel Fold. The activity on the left belongs to the embedded host, which is the setting app. The activity on the right belongs to the embedded app, which is the wallpaper picker app. Another scenario is when a developer wants to provide an option to perform a focused task in a different app without leaving the visual context of their own application, like opening a document preview from a file browser app. Allowing another application to embed your activity gives a lot of power to the host process. And that's why this is an opt-in feature, meaning that you need to tell Android that you want to allow specific activities to be embedded. And there are two ways to do that. In most cases, where there is a tight integration between two or more apps, you can define the SHA-1 certificate of the host application that you want to approve for embedding your activities. You can specify one or more certificates. But sometimes, you have an activity that is designed to be launched by multiple apps, enabling developers to build SDKs that are more tightly integrated with apps. In this case, the host certificate might not be known ahead of time, so you can choose to opt in to being embedded by any app. There is more that you can do, so go ahead and check the Window Manager release notes for all the latest features. Back to you, John, for any final thoughts. Large screens are getting bigger every year, literally, and in popularity. Optimize your apps for large screens today. Don't wait. 
It's a growing market opportunity you don't want to miss. Activity embedding can get you there with minimal investment and no risk of broken code. Try it on one least detail flow that you have, then a few more. In no time, you'll be exploring all kinds of use cases that will make your app great on large screens. Can't wait to see what you'll be doing with activity embedding.